While some Oklahoma wineries are now decades old, travel to Europe and it's easy to find wineries with heritages centuries old. The Oklahoma Ag Leadership class traveled to Spain and the Bodega Real Tesoro to get a first-hand taste of sherry history. Clinton Griffiths was there as the tasting began. Spain is the world's third largest exporter of wine, where vineyards account for 8% of all crops grown in the country. The Bodega Real Tesoro in Jerez is famous for a class of wine known as sherry wine. They gave us four different wines to taste. And the first two, what I now know, is are Spanish sherry. So they were more of a chilled, dry, white wine. And then the last two we tasted were more of the, the traditional sherry that I'm familiar with, where it's more raisiny and syrupy. And so um, that, was, that was what I expected to taste. The other was something new and different. Part of what makes Spanish sherry different is how it's made. Instead of aging fermenting wine in vats and full barrels, they use a tiered system only filling a cask part of the way. They also rely on what they call floor or a yeast crust to, to protect their sherry. They don't fill the barrels up full and that's different because you usually don't want air in your, in your wine. So, so that was entirely different to me. A third of the wine in each barrel is moved to the barrel below. Finally, a third from the bottom is removed for sale. The company has more than 50,000 casks in production. This is how Real Tesoro produces a consistent product year after year. While it relies on time-tested methods of production, the facility is constantly looking to improve its quality. One recent attempt is through the use of music. Last five years ago, uh, we started to work about the genome of music. Yeah? It's create, it's, well, we study first the ADN of uh, the, the yeast, and after with this, well, we create a music that is good for the development of the share of flower and to give a better wine at the final. Genoma music matches certain notes with the genetic code of the yeast or floor in hopes the music will fine tune quality. It's an idea that's sweeping through sectors of agriculture all over the world. Well, in general, in the north of Europe, they use that for um, upgrade the milk of the cow. Right? They say that they help to 10 person of uh, the production annually. But here, I don't think it's going to be for much more for the production, but it's much more for the quality of the wine. Do people think you're crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think some of them, yes. Real Tesoro is also looking to technology for other ways to improve the customer's experience. The other thing is uh, the histamine. The histamine is a product that you can, well, it's, um, it's an organism. They live inside the water. They believe that eliminating histamines will help minimize or eliminate the post-drink hangover for a good part of the population. Real Tesoro ships more than 60% of its production out of the country, yet Spanish sherry is not the drink it once was. I hope so, that one day the sherry wine is going to be like it was before in the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. Um, now it's not, uh, the, the most popular class of wine is much more red wine, but I think so one day uh, the taste of the people is going to change and they say, well, we're going to come back with the sherry wine. This is very good wine. And uh, I think so. My, I hope so that one day they come like this. But for the moment, to maintain this, uh, we have to produce uh, another class of wine like uh, red wine or white wine to help the production or to do it some distillation. Competition from red wine is popping up all over the world, including in its own backyard, like this up-and-coming vineyard on the outskirts of Granada, lying in the shadow of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Built in 1996, this facility produces about 70,000 barrels of wine per year, each barrel holding about 300 bottles. This is amazing. This is probably what everybody in Oklahoma wants, wants to be like. Uh, it's cl first class all the way. Charles Rolla works for the Noble Foundation in Ardmore and does a lot of work with vineyards in Oklahoma. After touring Spain's operations, he knows the state's producers face tough competition on the world stage. The biggest challenge is frost. Oklahoma, we're more susceptible for, to frost than here. 
And as we know, especially in the last few years, we've had a lot of frost damage or freeze damage in Oklahoma that's wiped out a lot of the vineyards. And a lot of it has to do with the varieties they choose because they want to be like Spain and European countries for, with the wine that they produce. Number one thing is select your varieties wisely. And there's three main classes of varieties for grapes. It's a European grape, a hybrid grape, and American grape. The American grapes are gonna be a lot more resistant to fr frost damage or tolerate toler or colder temperatures. The European grapes are gonna be more susceptible. But the European grapes are the ones that you see on most of the wine bottles. So that's what most people want to grow. Um, a recommendation would be to find one, uh, either a hybrid or American, and make a, a specialty wine that would fit Oklahoma's environment. It's advice Head Vintner at Real Tesoro can agree with. You can make a good wine around the world. For example, not too far than your country in Canada, they, you, they do it some ice wine. This is something different. This is something unique. And um, I think so each country, they wanted to do, do it some wine. They have to create something new about something in relation with each culture, but very good wine and something different, well, this is something uh, much more difficult to do. It.